happy Father's Day, and, and some, of the, some of the best fathers had to be mothers, and so uh, you guys know what that means, and so anyhow, it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord, and once again, to see all of you, Pastor uh, Henry and Cheryl Cox, Lord bless you, and so great to see you, and uh, I like that hat, Pastor Cheryl, she, she's styling over there, and uh, anyhow, these are our friends and family that go way back with us, and uh, it's just good to be in the house of the Lord today, and if you're here with us, I want to thank the, uh, you know, I'm just happy, I'm happy, and uh, maybe it's this new coat I got, this is, my, this is my Father's Day coat, and I liked it because it's, you know, it reminds me of the blood, I told, I told Newt, I said, this is my blood coat, it's bloody, it's bloody, it's, it's bloody, and it, it kind of matched my outfit, so uh, anyhow, it's, it, and it was on sale, it was on sale, it was like 65% off. You know, it's always good when it's, when it's that, you know. Come on, who in here you like to shop and get some? Thank you, thank you. Looking at me all sanctimonial and uh, where, do, where do we get this at? Off sacks. We are off sacks. And uh, anyhow, it's great to be here in the house of the Lord on this Father's Day. And I'm not in a hurry. I'm just looking at your beautiful faces uh, today. And uh, it's a great day to be in God's presence. I want to thank the worship team and the intercessors and all of those that serve in the house, all of our greeters and our media folks upstairs, and those of you that are joining us by way of live stream, God bless you. Welcome to Encounter Church, and those that are up in the booths that you don't see, they're up in the upper room behind you, and uh, God's good. God's good. And so on this Father's Day, but thank you because you get to, they get to push out the word of the Lord and the, uh, the power and the presence today. And uh, the reason I'm not in a hurry is because I'm just soaking in the Holy Ghost of that worship. You know, I could, I could sit and worship all day. I could just stay and worship and speak in tongues and, and listen to the, and, uh, but then it's not always just about you and receiving. It's about blessing and blessing God. But I just want to encourage you, when you leave here, God doesn't leave. And so you get to maintain the presence. You get to, but a lot of times we just shift. We're compartmentalized and we go out the door. We get in our cars and we, and we, revo we, we default back to, to natural mode. And, uh, but how many say, no, I'm not going to default. I'm, gonna, I'm going to go somewhere new. I'm going to have a reset in a Holy Ghost download. Have you ever been in the presence of God and God is birthing something new in you and causing creative ideas to, and there's inspiration of the Holy Ghost and you get inspired and you get a vision and then sometimes it gets lost. Lost and uh, but we say no. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to hold on to that word. And uh, I was thinking about this Father's Day. I have a whole bunch of scriptures. I don't know if I get to them. I don't really care if I get to them or not. I'm going to give you whatever comes out of my mouth. Someone says you're not responsible for what you say under the anointing. And so if it's anointed, uh, then I'm not. No, I'm not. But, uh, you know, Paul told Timothy, he reminded Timothy, here was Timothy, Paul speaking to Timothy, and this is a picture of a father figure. Paul was a father, a spiritual father to Timothy, and he reminds Timothy, and he says, Timothy, I want to remind you of who you are, and I want to remind you of the faith that's in you, and it didn't even come from your natural daddy. It didn't come, it says, that came from your grandmother and your mother. And he says that to Timothy. And so Timothy was this. Here's a situation right there in Scripture where you had a, a spiritual father, a man to a man, reminding him of his lineage and of his heritage that came from his grandmother and his mother. Aren't you thankful that someone prayed you into the kingdom of God? That someone prayed for you? How many of you guys had a praying grandmother? Right? You had a praying mother? I know that's right. I know I, I, I caused my mother a lot of sleepless, tear tearful days, nights, hair pulled out, and just praying, and I'm so thankful that the Lord saved me, and he saved me on, on this, today he's saving me. I was saved, I'm being saved, and I'm going to be saved. How many of you guys, you got to want it every day. You have to want Jesus every day. We can't live off of yesterday's manna, and so on this Father's Day 2022, when you think about who God is, in the Old Testament, every time there was a new revelation of God or he met their need, then he also demonstrated a new name. A new name of God was revealed that met their need. El Shaddai, he's the Lord Almighty. El Elyon, he's the Most High. Adonai, he's the Lord or the Master. Yahweh, he is Jehovah. Jehovah Nisi, he is my banner. Jehovah Rahi, he is my shepherd. Jehovah Rapha, he's my healer. 
Jehovah Shema, he's my presence. He's with me. He's there. Jehovah Sidkenu, he's my righteousness. Jehovah Sidkenu, he's my sanctifier. El Olam, he's the everlasting God. Elohim, he's God. Quana, he's jealous. Jehovah Jireh, he's my provider. Jehovah Shalom, he is my peace. Jehovah Sabbat, he is the Lord of hosts. And forgive me on my Hebrew if I didn't get it all right, but how many of you know that, that God demonstrated his character and who he was and what they needed in that moment? And that was in the Old Testament. How much more in the new? Come on, you say much more. Much more. Have you ever been around somebody who says, I wish I was back in David's day? Sometimes I hear people say that. You know how David just killed his enemies and just, you know, he prayed down. Come on, how many guys got that on you sometimes? You were like, I want to pray one of those David prayers. Somebody irritates you and makes you mad, and you're like, I want to be back in the. And I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. You think you want to be back, but no, no, you do not have a revelation of the great grace that God, because if God dealt with you like you want him to deal with your enemies, you wouldn't even be here standing. So shut up and stop talking. Because you don't even know the Bible. You don't even know the Bible, how, how great a grace that we live in and how, my, how good God is to us. How good he is to us. How good. And, and he hasn't dealt with us according to our sins. He hasn't dealt with us according to our performance. He hasn't dealt with us, but he's dealt with us according to his great love and his mercy. And I'm like, Lord, help me. That's a good prayer. I was watching a movie, and this guy got so broke down. He was like, please help. Please help me. We were watching this movie, and I'm not going to say the name of it because I had a lot of cussing, and I had to turn it off. Portia recommended it, but <laughs> but but anyhow, he got so desperate. He got so desperate in this situation. He was like, "Please help me, please!" And he was just broken. And I was like, "You know what? That's a good place to be. That's a good place to be." And then in the movie, I'm telling you, this guy was all tatted up. He was tatted up in the movie, and he had tats on his chest and his arm. And someone says, well, what does all those tats mean? He says, well, these, these tats right here, these, this is for my mom, and these tats are for my, my daughter. And then he didn't have any tats on this side. And he says, well, what about that side? He said, these tats represent, or these, this arm represents my dad. Because it was blank. And I said, yep, there it is. That's how sometimes we feel when, when our natural fathers, our people in our life, let us down. And so here in this movie, but being broken before being humble. And so here is Jesus. And one of the things that Jesus came to do is to show us what God was really like. When Jesus showed up before the revelation of who he was, he wanted to show us what was God, what was uh, God Almighty, I don't want to say the Father because I know I'm going to keep saying the Father, the Father, the Father. I'm looking for another word. So Jesus clarified all the stereotypes about God. He showed us that God is not some impersonal force. In fact, Jesus described in two words in Matthew 6, 9, he said, this is how you should pray. In other words, this is how you should think. You should talk to God. This is how you should address the creator of the universe, our Father in heaven. Just think about that. And I don't want to just say, oh, I'm going to say my daddy. My daddy in heaven. And it's not just because sometimes we think God is everywhere. And yes, he is everywhere. But just think of it. Our father, our father God is heavenly. He's nothing like our earthly fathers. And, and Father's Day, it, it, it stirs up pain because even though we may have had natural fathers or the lack thereof or the disappointments and a lot of our, our viewpoints of God and our how we view God is based upon sometimes how our parents and how we are raised, and it affects us in that way. And so Jesus comes into the scene and he says, I want you to pray this way. And so for us, that's not really a big deal. But for his disciples back then, 2,000 years ago, for him to say those words to address God as father, that was revolutionary. They were like, what? You mean call, call God daddy? 
That's what he was saying. When you pray, go to God and call him dad. Call him daddy. Call him daddy. And now we get used to that, but back then they were like, we don't, we don't pray to God like that. We don't address God as daddy. This is revolutionary. It shocked them. The entire Old Testament for over a thousand years, God only was only referred to as father seven times. Jesus refers to the father seven times alone in that chapter, Matthew chapter 6. In his life and in the gospel, he talked about God being his father over 150 times. He said, this is how God wants to relate to you. Not just church, not just religion. The good news is that since God is a father, we know that he's a person, not just a power or a source. Something that just we want them to him or this force or this being just to do something for us. It's very difficult to relate to the, a power or force. But when you say God is a father, I can relate to a father. See, God knew what we needed. He knew what to reveal. I can have a relationship with a father. Not like my natural father. My natural father did good. I, my natural father had me. I think he was 46 years of age when he had me. My mom was 41, something like this. When I was a teenager, my dad was old. Compared, you know, he was like, he was old, older. Now, 60's not old. I shouldn't say it like that, but older. You know what I'm saying? But he did the best he could. I was the ninth of ten, and I was the, one of the worst of the nine. Uh, but he did, he did his best. And there were some things he did, and there were some things he didn't do well. There's some mistakes he made. I remember one day my mom yelling at my dad, I hate you, I hate you. I never want to see you again. And some of you guys know what I'm talking about. You guys have been in some of those households. Because sometimes dads can cause hell, or fathers can cause hell in the natural home. And we won't even go there right now with that, but... Or the lack thereof. And so, but I can talk to a father, and that's good news. The bad news, I'm going to go back to the bad news. When I use this, for some of us, it conjures up painful memories. Rather than being a happy term, it's a sad term for some, even angry. It stirs up deep resentment. You had a father who was neglectful. You had a father who was abusive or physically or verbally or a husband uh, that was. I had a father who just wasn't there a non-entity in your life. Some of you, when you think of the word father, it brings up fear. Human fathers can make homes hell. They can be selfish. They can be demanding. They can be inconsistent. They can be self-centered. They can fail you, and so can you. And sometimes you even do those things to yourself. I won't say that, but. So here it is, when we come to this term about fathers, a lot of times people, when you ask them, what is their view of God? Some of it stems from how they were raised. And they would say, God is unreasonable. He has a lot of rules and restrictions. You know, I don't want to do that God stuff because it's just, it's, it's, you know, religion is restrictive. I can't do the things. It's all about what I can't do. I don't know who it was. I think one of our preachers are testified. Uh, it was like, God, uh, I can't do this or I can't do that. I can't go party. I can't have fun. And so you think of God as being unreasonable or restrictive or he's unreliable. Maybe you've been hurt. And a lot of times when we're hurt or we have unmet expectations, even by other people, a lot of us blame God. God, if you're really real, God, then why did you allow this? Have you ever thought that in your mind? God, if you were all powerful in control, why did you allow this to happen to me? And so sometimes people's views of God, it's because he, there was hurt or there was an unreliability. Or another aspect of why people say they don't really want to draw near to God as Father or God is because maybe he's too far away. He's unconcerned. He's not really concerned about me. He's not really concerned about my kids. He's not really concerned about my rent or my, he's not really concerned about my relationships with, he's not that concerned. You know, he's, he's God and he's in church and all, but he's not really, when I leave here, he's not really in the car with me and really concerned what I'm feeling right now. That's another lie. I heard a great friend preacher Moses Vey, he says, if God has anything to do with you, he has everything to do with you. I'm going to say that again. If God has anything to do with you, he has everything to do with you. 
Or another reason, a lie that people come across, they say, God is, I can't please him. God is always judging. Why are you always judging me? God is always judging me like we look at God like he has a report card. Oh, you are based upon our performance or maybe he, you haven't done this today. And all those, those four things, the unreasonable or unreliable or unconcerned or unpleasable, those are all based on, on external lies that say this is, this is my, how I view God. People outside, I'm not talking about you in here. I'm talking about people outside, you know, outside of this room that, that don't know the Lord. But then Jesus showed up. Jesus shows up. And I don't know about you. When he saved me from myself and saved me from this world and saved me from sin. And then he saves you and regenerates your mind and opens up the scriptures to you. And you see that you were not just born. I love it because Jesus is hanging out with a, a religious guy. And he says, unless you're born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. And then he takes it a little bit deeper. He says, but unless you're born of water and of the spirit, you can't even enter in. You can't even get through the door to access it. So you can't just know you got to do it. Say, I got to do it. You got to do it. And so we see Jesus. Jesus was a, a perfect model of a son. And even the father, because we know Jesus and the father are one. You just read. I'll give you some scriptures. You read. John 14 and 15, Jesus says, you've seen me. They were like, Jesus, show us the Father. And he was like, dummy, I told you. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father because the Father is in me and I'm in him. He's a good father. He's a great father. He's a loving father. He's a father that doesn't just, just meet our needs. He wants us just to be with him. Just to be with them. I want you to think about, I think about Kalila sometimes when I see her holding her granddaughter. Or how many have a grandchild in here? Any grandparents in here? You're, okay, bless you, grandparents. Okay. And, and, or you're a parent. And uh, Portia posted this picture. When you're holding a, a child, like my grandson, he can't speak, but he speaks. He can't hear me, but he hears me. I talk to him, and I, I love it because I sit there and making goo-goo sounds at him and letting him hear and, and, and making up corny songs. and You know what I'm talking about? And I'm like, this is a picture of how God the Father wants to communicate. Because sometimes we think we got to have all the right words. We gotta, how many of you know it's, it's, it's spirit to spirit? It's not brain to brain. It's not just even natural words. Think of this, in the garden, what language did God speak? There was no language then. But there was communication, there was intimacy, there was fellowship, there was communion, there was love, there was fulfillment, there was all the things that we long for and that we want from our relationship with God. And so the redemptive work of Jesus is to the redemptive work of the cross, as Pastor Cox said, the redemptive work of Calvary is to get us back to creative order. And creative order is when you hang out with God. It's not about coming. It's not about doing this, reading your Bible. It's just walking with him and knowing him and listening to him. See, because Jesus went on to say, and we can get through it in Matthew chapter 5, chapter Five, six, and seven. If you really want to know what the Father is like, read Matthew 4, 5, 6, 7. Because Jesus brings a whole new mindset about love and forgiveness and praying for your enemy. That all came from Father God. If you look at a woman or if you get angry or if, uh, all the things that we are. All the things that you and I are guilty of, murder and adultery, all the things of, of pain, all those things that we have committed. And Jesus showed up with the mandate from the Father. He was saying, what, blessed in the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are, you guys know, um, his heart. This was all from the Father. And he ends up in chapter 6, and he was saying, he was like, many, many that come to me and say, Lord, Lord. Didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? 
And, we, you know, in our church age today, we get so caught up with, do we have the power to cast out devils? And everybody wants to cast out devils. Nothing wrong with casting out devils, but it comes out of Nothing wrong with prophecy, but you're not going to take prophecy. You're not going to take casting out devils. You're not even going to take your faith. Well, you will take your faith into the next world with you. See, Jesus brought it back to another level. He was like, shh, shut up. Stop talking. Listen, I'm trying to show you what the Father is like. It's not about all the things we can do because authority and dominion comes from how close you are, not just because you have the name. You could have the name, but unless you hang out, unless you have proximity, unless you get really close, unless you hang out there, then that's where impartation and transformation comes. And so Jesus says, this is the God that I'm showing you. This is the way, this is how I walk with my daddy, how I spend time in prayer in the morning, and I listen, and I don't say anything or do anything unless the Father tells me that is the model of my relationship, and that I'm, I'm modeling or showing you what you should be like with your dad. Because as Jesus was in the earth, so are we. And so the first thing that we start with is intimacy with God. It's just being with him, being with him. When Jesus, and I've shared this before, I think it's in Mark chapter 3, Mark chapter 4, it says when Jesus called his disciples before he sent them out to preach, he says, I called them to be with me, then to preach. And so all the, the after uh, works of ministry, preaching, casting out devils, preaching the gospel, whatever you want to do, laying hands, it's all going to stem out of being with someone. That's why I say when you leave here today, carry his presence with you. When we were singing about there was joy in the house of the Lord, I was like, that's me. I'm the house. You're the house. You're the house of God. And so the joy can be with you. You can carry it where you go. And how I many of you know you got to fight to keep right? Come on, because everything in this fallen world, everything in this fallen world that wants to cause us to default into the natural, into our relationships, how we deal with our life, how we deal with our relationships, how we deal with our money, how we deal with our health, how... It all wants to default us back into a fallen mindset. But I don't know about you. I says, no, I need to stay in the heavenly. I need to stay up in the heavenly. I need to stay in the heavenly. And so Jesus told his disciples, he says, I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. As an orphan. Orphan are fatherless children. Orphans are, I would, it starts with a B. It's a kind of a, but it means you are unfatherable. It's in the book of Hebrews that you are not correctable. And uh, how many know God will correct us? And we need correction. We need correction. Can't be left to ourselves. And so Jesus comes and he shows us that the one thing our father is, is caring. He's a caring father. He cares. He really cares about us. Listen to this verse in Psalm 104. He says, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who honor him. And you know what the father does? Remember in, in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus is doing all these miracles. Just leave that slide up. In Matthew chapter 9, but it says Jesus went through their villages preaching and teaching. And then it says that he was moved with compassion and saw the people that they were like sheep would have no shepherd. That was the heart of the Father. That's the heart of the Father, that Jesus saw people. And so I was like, Lord, convicted me. Help me to see people. Help me to have compassion. Help me to see. Help me to love. Because I'm not going to be judged on what people do to me. It's how I respond. It's how I treat. It's how I love. And you know when it's tested? is when they irritate the hell inside of you. When you're irritated. Has anybody been irritated? Uh, whoever is up there on that, can you put up, can you, can you put up, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 on the slide for me. Can we just put 1 Corinthians 13? And if you got it on your phone or your Bible. But it says, even though I have the gift of faith and I can move mountains and I have the gift of prophecy and can do all this, but if I don't have the love of the Father, I am a sounding gong or a, no, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, thank you. 
And then it goes on and it describes the eternal qualities of our Father God. Because God is love. The Father is love. And so, let me just turn there. Thank you. Though I speak with the tongues of, just keep going to the next verse, please. Whoever's up there. That's, next verse, please. Thank you. Next verse. Speed reading. The Father, this is what I'm going to say. The Father suffers long. The Father is kind. The Father doesn't envy. The Father does not parade himself, is not puffed up. I don't know what translation that is, but it'll do. Next verse. The Father does not behave rudely. Everybody say rude. rude. The Father does not seek his own. The father is not provoked. When was the last time you got provoked? Somebody provoked you. When was the last time you thought evil of somebody? See, when, when, when you get into God's presence and his word, God will show you your, your, yourself. And all of us in our flesh stink. Stinketh. And see, ultimately, and does not behave rudely. You can keep going. Thank you. It does not rejoice in iniquity, or the Father doesn't. But the Father rejoices in truth. Next verse. The Father bears all things. He believes all things. He hopes all things. He endures all things. The Father never fails. Whether there be prophecies, they're going to fail. Whether there be tongues, they're going to cease. You're not going to need tongues in heaven. Whether there's knowledge, it's going to vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to wait to heaven to get perfect. I want perfect right now. Come on, when perfect. You know that in back in Matthew chapter 6... Jesus was going through uh, the, the, parab the parables and the Beatitudes there. And it says, the last verse, I think it's of chapter 6, it says, Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. That means act like your daddy. Now, those of you that have natural kids, they bear your name. They bear the family name. And you know in your life, if that child gets away, if that child starts going astray, or if that child starts doing things that disgraces the family name, you want to go and snatch them and bring them back. And how many of you guys want to just shake that child a little bit and be like, boy, you were raised differently. Or you, were, you have a Why? Because they carried the name of their daddy. Or if they get off and just do... I mean, I do stupid things. You do stupid things. Your kids do. I mean, and, but as a father, you're like, I want to protect them. I want to save them. I want to rescue them from themselves. And how much more the father in his mercy and his great loves when we get away. How I many you know, as we said earlier, you think you can, you can get in, but there's not, there's not, it's hard to get out. His love will chase you down. It will hunt you down. And he'll come and he'll snatch you in love. And he'll shake you a little bit. He'll make you uncomfortable. He'll make you miserable. Why? Because he says, you are my son. And I've paid a price for you. And I love you. You didn't even create yourself. You didn't even, you didn't even, you, you didn't even uh, cause yourself, your existence to appear. I did that. In my sovereignty, I chose your mom and your dad. I'm the one that chose the day of where you're going to live. That is all sovereign God. And so we're born, even though we're born in the natural, when you're born again from above, when you're born again by the power of his word, anything born of God overcomes the world. So you and I are an overcomer. You're not, I don't care if you don't feel like it. I don't care if there's areas in your life you're not overcoming. The spirit of the overcomer is inside of you. Because whatever is born of God is going to overcome. 
So you can't stay in defeat, whatever that is. Areas, God says, no, 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 you're, you may want to stay there because misery loves company, and we want to stay in defeat because we get used to it. We made our, our, our home there. We know the doors. We know all the avenues, the access points of defeat. But God says, no, 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 no. I love you too much to leave you in third grade the rest of your life. Uh, I'm going to help you grow. And so it's his love. This passage describes the love of the Father. And there's one, I don't know what translation says, it's not irritable, but I find myself being irritable. Is it just me? Sometimes I'm irritated. And I don't know if it's I'm irritating myself or other people are irritating me or it's life. It, come on, how irritations. How many of you guys have been irritated? Somebody's irritated you. And you realize that's your flesh. But the Father is not irritated. Aren't you glad that God, that the Father is not irritated with you? With your stupidity and, and your, he's not irritated. And he doesn't want us to be irritated with people and ourselves. And I'm like, Lord, I need help. I need a lot of help. I need a lot, a lot of help to, because I want to, you know, I, I, my, my flesh, I want to respond in a way that's not fatherly. It's not godly. And so this is what Jesus came to model, and that's why I said to you, don't go back to the old. Don't go back to the Old Testament where you say, I want to go back. No, Jesus says, you love God, but how you show me that you love me is you obey what I tell you to do and how you treat people and how Jesus walked. How did Jesus walk? How did Jesus live? How did he talk? What was his manner? How did he deal with people he didn't agree with or people that offended him or irritated him? So he's a caring father. And so he cares for us. Back to our slides. Thank you, whoever's up there. I don't know if it's Shara Omar. Can you give them a hand, whoever's up there? Don't worry. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I only got four pages left. But, but he's caring. God is caring. He loves us. He cares. He has compassion. He sees us. Just like I said, Jesus had compassion. He saw people. In 1 Peter 5, it says, to cast all of your anxiety all of your care on him because he cares for you. This word means anxiety or fear or worry. You know what that means? It means to be divided. It means to be uh, not unified. Come on, I, you could be that way. I could be that way when we worry. And one of the basic things in elementary principles in the gospel is he doesn't want to worry about how we're gonna, our bills are going to get made. Pet, uh, met. It's what the word I'm looking for, I paid. That's elementary. He was like, why do you worry about what you're going to wear? Why do you worry about what you're going to eat? Why are you going to worry about those? That he said, don't you know that my heavenly, that you are worth more than two little sparrows or you're worth more than the flowers? Of he was like, don't you know how much God loves you? And you are tripping and you're so worried about these basic things that this is basic. He says, I want you to know that you have a father, a heavenly father that cares for you. And just think about it, because sometimes, you know what I'm talking about? That's, we, we worry about those things. Those things concern us. We do. Those are natural things. But that's how caring he wants to be in our life, that we can cast it on him. I, I had to do that. Lord, let me cast this on you. And when you cast it on him, the tendency is to take it back up. But come on, just, just take it and throw it. Don't hit your neighbor. Don't hit him in the head. But just... Throw it, on, throw it. Cast your care on him. Now, that doesn't mean be irresponsible and go do something stupid. Then it says this, so don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. Your heavenly father knows these things. So he's a caring father. Next slide, God is consistent. He's consistent. He's consistent in our changing world. How many know that we live in a very changing world, rapidly changing, technologically, move fast pace? Have you ever like, man, this, the, the pace of life is just kind of crazy. I need two Sabbath days and just, right? Trying to pay bills, work, do this, schedules. How many of you guys got crazy schedules? And so it says that he is perfect and he doesn't change. In our changing world, every good and perfect gift is from the Father who does not change like shifting shadows, James 1 through 117. In 2 Timothy 2, it says even when we are unfaithful or faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot disown himself. That means you because you're part of him. 
Romans 11, 19, he says he doesn't go back on his promises. And Psalm 59, 10 says, my God is changeless in his love for me. He's changeless in his love for me. He just loves you. He chooses to love you. So our father is caring. He's consistent. And then I like this. Number three, he's close. He's close. He's close. He's close. Just close your eyes and see through the eyes of the spirit, eyes of your faith. And one of my favorite verses in Acts 17, it says, he's not a far off. He's really close that you would just breathe and it, or just hope in him. He doesn't, he's not way out in heaven, way out in the blue. You know, he's really close. And it says that it's in him that we live and move and have our breath. Just like you taking a breath. That's how close God is. Just like you breathing. That's how close he is. He's close. He's close. He's close. He's never too busy for me. The Lord is near to all who call upon, upon him. And guess what? He loves to meet our needs. He loves to meet our needs. And so he don't want you always coming to him, begging him. Oh, dad, I need this. I need to do this, do this. No, just love him. I told you the story. One time we took out our goddaughter. Years ago, and one time we took out some kids, and they were complaining, why do you got to give me that? And why do I got that? And we took out our goddaughter, and she was like, Auntie Portia and Uncle Steve, you don't have to buy me anything. I just like being with you. How many of you know she got the whole store? She, we, were like, we were like, whatever you want here. You want this? Well, she just like being. And I don't know if she was... Manipulating us, I think, there was a, I think there was a little manipulation there. But it worked. But it worked. It says he loves to meet our needs, Matthew 7. If you know how to, listen to this, if you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, there it is, how much more, how much more, heavenly, heavenly, higher, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So how I many you know God is not some killed? He's like waiting to withhold from you. You know, he wants to meet your needs, and he is sympathetic to your hurts. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. How I many you know there's times when you're going to go through brokenness? There's times where life or people, you're going to disappoint you. Loved ones are going to disappoint you. You may even disappoint you or situations, and there's going to be a crushing. And how I many you know that there's those seasons and then the last one, God is a competent father. He's competent. He's, he got it together. I mean, oh, God is competent. He's not like you're, he's, he got, he's holy. You know what holy means? It means not just holy, holy, but he's, he got it together. He's all together. He's whole. He's not broke down. He's not broke. He's not worried. He's not worried about the nations. He's not worried about the government. He's not worried about politics. He's not worried about disease. He's not worried about any of the things that you and I that worry. He's not worried about time. He's not worried about schedules. Come on, he's higher. He's higher. His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. He's higher. He's higher. He's a good, good father. For nothing is impossible with God. Ephesians 3 says, God is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream. He's infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, or hopes. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, God loves everybody. He's the creator of all mankind but he's not their father. He's only a father to those who have relationship. Now he, so I can talk to men this way, just because you fathered a child doesn't make, make you their daddy. And so in the natural, it's that way, and even in the spiritual, yes, he is the creator of all, he's all creative, but to come into relationship, to be father or daddy takes relationship. And that relationship only comes through the son, Jesus Christ. That's why he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the daddy, to my father, except through me. There has to be relationship. 
There has to be relationship. So right now we're going to get ready to bless all of the fathers today. And if you're a father, can you just stand? And we want to bless you and we're going to pray for you today. Just come and, and um, we're going to give you. Just come on. When they go out, they'll get them. Okay, just stand up. They'll pass them out. But all the fathers, you, just come down. We want to bless you because fathers, you're, you're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. Just come on and stand down here. Come on out of your seat. Just stand down here. It's a great privilege being a dad. Being a dad. Just go ahead and line up across, guys. Line up across. We're going to pray for you. I'm going to give Woo! you a gift. Thank you, Jesus. And you're great. You're great because you're made in his image. And you have a relationship with the son. And you have a responsibility to your homes and your households, to your wives and to your children, your grandchildren, that there will be a generational anointing and blessing that will come upon you. And even as the father of this house, I pronounce a blessing upon each father here. Lord, a new spiritual inheritance, a new spiritual blessing, a new mantle of fatherhood, a new mantle of grace, a new mantle. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night. You tell me that you're pleased and I am never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. fathers that are standing in this room today and those that were such a to those God I, I even pray for those that have lost your fathers God that this father's day is really hard for them Lord God but father I pray that you would embrace them father God that you would touch them Lord God father that you would show them the father that you really are God that they're not alone father I pray right now Lord God that you would comfort their hearts and for every father standing, God, I pray, God, just for a double portion of your spirit, God. Oh, God, that they can do the task that is ahead of them, Lord God. That they can be the example that my husband preached about, Lord God. The example that who you are, Lord God. They will come into a closer relationship with you. Father, I thank you for the fathers, and we bless them now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. You're dismissed. You're dismissed.